Hello and welcome, it's Deborah from Attic Lane and this video follows on from an earlier video where we made tags using some very simple straightforward things that you should have around the house or can easily get a hold of like white card, like some cutting out some flowers from a floral wildflower booklet, like sewing on some raggedy edges to give texture to a tag and using ordinary printed papers and uh, white card to make some flowers. These are all shown in the previous video. I'll provide a link to it up there or down there, probably up there. And uh, please go and have a look if you haven't already seen that. Just as a quick follow on from that video, I wanted to make a suggestion to you. So these are standard size tags and I made a template uh, from the tag and I laminated it. Now what this means is that you don't have to buy a special die cutter to cut a die uh, to cut a tag size as long as you follow these dimensions and then snip the corners off then you've got a tag and I thought it would be a good idea if you have a laminator or if you can use one at your business or at your school just to laminate your template and then cut it out. Now obviously once you've cut it out it will be a couple of millimetres wider than, let me see if I can show you, a couple of millimetres wider than the tag dimensions but I'm not going to send the tag police to come and get you if you cut it ever so slightly bigger than it should be but it means that then when you want to uh, create a tag let me grab a piece of paper all you need to do if you don't have a die cutter is put the tag on your paper, get your pencil or your pen and draw around it and then cut it out and if you use the same template every time you make your tags then they will all be a uniform size. So um, that was just a little idea I thought I'd share with you before we move on to the rest of the video. I've also done uh, a little, let me move that because it's shining a bit in the lights, I've also um, cut a, a standard size artist trading card. So this is the standard size for an artist trading card. You'll sometimes see them called ATCs and it's three and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide and that is their standard size. And I've given you sort of standard sizes for tags and for the ATC just so that um, you know you know what the standard sizes are and then if you want to do swaps with people you've, you've got, you should have similar dimensions. But of course none of this um, is a rule that you need to follow. You can you can do your own sizes as suits. I also have my dimensions here in uh, uh, millimeters, 63 millimeters across, 90 millimeters up and down. And that means that if I want to cut this out just from card, if I don't want to get out my die cutter, or if I don't have one, I can just cut out a piece of card. Now this has got rounded corners. I think you should be able to see the rounded corners on that. They're not straight edges. Of course, if you don't have a die cut, it really doesn't matter if the edges are pointy but if you didn't want to go to the expense of buying a die cutter the other thing that you could do is you could get a cornerizator it's a it rounds your corners the one that i have is quite old it's zutter innovations and it's called a round it all and this size that i'm using is a quarter a quarter inch and you pop your corner edge in there squeeze it and it cuts you a nice roundy corner like that but of course um, you don't have to get one of these you could do it by hand if you if you're good with scissors or uh, you could just get a, a little cornerization thing and um, and then you can do corners on them so that was just something I wanted to give you an idea for so you can try it yourself now let's move on to the purpose of this video which is to show you how to make envelopes and tuck spaces for your journal using various collected things and from the first video you might remember that I took apart a cereal box and I reserved the cardboard and we used the cardboard to make the cover for our journal and I saved the cereal bag because it's like a glassine bag and it's got that crinkly texture. It's a bit more shiny than normal glassine bags but if we're using junk then let's make good use of this. I'm going to cut this down, I'm going to cut it down like this so that I keep, I'm going to try and keep the base 
and I'm going to leave the tops open and then we're going to decorate it. Our two bags are cut down to size. I've kept the the uh, the glue bit at the bottom where they're secured and this one I've had a little experimentation so I think I'm going to fold this one over I'm going to leave a little flap open and I'm going to use a tape runner now this I found is better than um, a wet glue because this will grab the bag faster you can get these in office uh, depot type stores um, and in news agents but if you don't have one of these PVA glue will do the job you just have to let it sit and dry a bit longer and just do a thin line down both sides don't make it a fat line because when you close the bag all the glue will splurge out to the sides So now I have two lines of adhesive down the side and all I need to do is stick that in place. You can see the little uh, strip of adhesive but it's really not very obvious. You'd only see it if you were looking for it. And I think I'm going to glue down this flap as well. So then I've left uh, a little top flap to open out and show you where, where the bag is. And this bag I'm going to do something different with. I'm going to find out if it's sewable. So I'm going to try and sew down both sides there. And again, I'm going to leave where it has got its own natural adhesion at the bottom. And the result is that it does sew. It sews quite evenly, actually. So I've, uh, I've done a little zigzag stitch down both sides. And I've also turned over the top flap and I've secured it with a little bit of my tape runner. I'm going to just uh, snip off part of this bit and I'm going to neaten the edges. I'm also going to just cut across the bottom of the bag. I think that gives it a better dimension and then it's ready for you to pop in a tag or any other piece of ephemera that you want to include in your journal. So that's one free glassine bag and there's another one. And again I'm going to just snip off the bottom because I think that makes better dimension and there's still enough uh, glue there from the original packaging that holds that in place. So that's two little bags, for free in effect. <laughs> I'm going to cut out one of the little explanations about the flowers that's on the reverse of the flowery bit of the page. I'm going to use this to make my glassine envelope a little bit more interesting, if I can cut it square. And I'm going to take a paper clip. These are little paper clips. And I'm going to attach it like that to my envelope. That makes it a little bit more interesting. But it can be more interesting. I have a little bit of paper on my flowery part of my paper which I'm going to cut off and I'm going to use it to add some colour to my envelope which is otherwise quite stark. This is a PVA glue but I've transferred it into a little tiny tiny little squirty bottle so then I can stick that back onto my envelope and of course you could glue this if you don't want to use a paper clip but the paper clip gives it extra interest I think. While we're talking about paper clips this is too good an opportunity to miss. Now this does use um, specialist tools such as wire clippers and long nose pliers but I thought I could show you this because it's quite a fun thing. I didn't invent this by the way, lots of people do this. So you take a paper clip, these are quite large, these are 50mm paper clips 
and you find have it facing this way so that the uh, the double loop is on the left hand side get your long nose pliers and then find the middle on the bottom rung of the paper clip this is going to be a wee bit fiddly hopefully I can show you this okay there we go and then grip it with your long nose pliers Let's make sure you can see and then push the two end pieces up I'm going to push that back down again because oops I need that bit that double loop bit I need it to go behind so make sure that's behind and then push them up like that the reason that I need my wire clippers is because I'm going to cut off this extra piece so it matches this side so this side is perfect this side has got a loop and that loop needs to be cut I'm going to turn it around for ease I'm going to cover it over as well while I do that so it doesn't go everywhere so there we go I've cut off that extra loop so that now it's the same on both sides except it's not quite the same that's that one's a bit longer so I'm just going to trim that down because my neat freak is in town I can do this I'm really strong now it's got a front and a back so the back the two the two extra pieces of wire cross behind this which would be uh, like a heart shape let me show you so that's the heart shape that we have and at the back we have the two legs I'm going to take my long nose pliers and I'm going to curl around the ends of both of those little legs so that they have a neat loop on them there we go and it means that you can have your paper clip facing front or back and either side is lovely so you've changed uh, an ordinary paper clip into a sweet little heart and again you can use those on loads of projects let's swap it out on this piece and see how it looks there we go that's really sweet a nice unusual paper clip but so easy to do the next thing I want to show you is how to get words text into your journal so quite often you'll see journals and they've got all sorts of lovely words that maybe um, people have bought in sticker form or whatever you can just print off your own words on your printer so this is I've cut these down because I store them in a little box I store them in this little box uh, along with some tags and things like that and I um, so I have these always ready uh, to add to a project and I want to use these words here I'm going to cut them down and I'm going to back them onto a piece of our written paper our book paper I'm going to try and get it straight and everything Ooh, whoop, whoop. I think I did that that's not bad for me um, I'll cut this paper down to size and then it will fit beautifully but before I do that I want to show you a couple of different little ways that you can zhuzh this up and I'm assuming that you're not a crafter and I'm assuming that you don't have um, inks and things like that because we're doing this just from things you might have around you but I am going to suggest that you might have a brown pen such as this and that you can draw a little line around the outside border of your words this will help to make your words stand out when they are stuck onto printed paper now I'm going to stick these down 
I've put a couple of lines of tape runner on the reverse and I'm going to pop these onto my printed page and then I can just cut around it. So that's one thing then. Now you could add this onto your the front of your bag if you want to make that a little bit more interesting or you could just reserve it for inclusion in your journal but that's quite sweet now the other thing i want to show you as an idea let's get some more words let's get flower scented i want to show you a way that you can distress paper just using your scissors and distress means simply give it a rough edge. So open out your scissors. It's easier with smaller scissors, I must say. And just rub along the top edge or along all of the edges. And you don't have to press. And don't cut yourself. I don't want anybody to be injured while making a journal. Not on my watch anyway. This uh, roughs up the paper quite nicely. You can get all kinds of gadgets for roughing up paper, but essentially scissors will do it. When you buy gadgets, it's great, but then you lose them, they go in the back of the drawer, maybe you don't use them for a while, you forget all about them. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> there we go, nicely roughed up. And you can curl those edges, curl those corners, make it look a little bit rougher. There we go. Make it look a little bit more distressed, put a little rip in the top maybe. Maybe a little rip in the side there. Make the most of those rips, make them really visible by pulling away at those edges. And then that can be stuck onto a piece of paper. Our printed paper again like that and this time I'm going to add pen but I'm not going to add it onto the white card I'm going to add it onto the paper onto the page and I'm just going to go around the outside edge there just where the paper the white paper lands on the page and I'm going to make that a bit scruffy as well. I'm not doing a neat straight line. I'm just uh, pulling the line down a little bit sometimes and just making it a little bit more scruffy. And you don't have to do all of the edges. I quite like it just top and bottom. And I'm going to take the lines out beyond my white page, my white sheet. It makes it look as if there's some shadow going on and again it helps to make your words stand out. Here are two sweet little envelopes just made out of paper pages and it's all just folded there's no cutting or gluing once you've got your paper cut from a book. If you want your text to be the right way up on the reverse of the envelope where the flap is then you start with a piece of paper this way up and all your actions will be this way up in order to achieve your text the correct way around. The first thing to do is to fold your paper in half long ways. Now I'm going to use, I have a mat that has some lines on here and I'm going to use, I'm going to line up my crease with the lines on my mat just to save me uh, keep sort of looking for that middle fold. Um, because it can be quite difficult to find on soft paper like this um, with text all over it. And I'm going to fold in the top two corners almost to that centre point but not quite, not quite hard up against it, leaving a little gap. So that's the first thing, it's a bit like making a paper aeroplane. I'm going to do everything this way up so I might look a bit cat handed but when you do yours I think you'll find it a bit easier. The next thing to do is to fold it in 
into the centre, the whole of that side into the centre. And then we're going to do the same on this side. I'm going to try and keep it slightly to the left of the fold line. That's about right. And then I'm just going to do this by eye. We're going to fold it up into thirds. First of all I'm going to fold this piece in because my thirds will stop at this point. And I'm going to do a little bit there. That's a third-ish. And then a little bit there, which will take it up to that line, that fold on the top. At this point I can I can squeeze it down quite tightly. And then this flap, which was the bottom third of my sheet, will get folded. If I can show you this properly, I'm going to I'm going to fold this piece in here where this triangle is formed. This is going to go in there, and I'm going to hope that you can see what I'm doing because it's a wee bit fiddly, and I'm trying to make sure that you can see it as well. There we go. It's in. You see that it's, it's curling into the back of that uh, triangle. That's it. This might show you. There, you can see it's folded into this part here. And then you can fold over the top and you can use that to pop things in, like your word that we made before. That will just go in there beautifully. So you can pop anything you like in there. Now, what if you want this to be a little bit, you want it to close. Well, do you remember we did use uh, this to make our whole uh, reinforcers and protectors. So this is a half inch punch. I'm trying to avoid using too much, uh, too many gizmos and gadgets, but, but I, this is very, very useful. And um, because I've already used it in an earlier video, I'm gonna sneak it into this video too. I want to cut out one of these leaves. I want to punch a little hole out. It doesn't have to be exact, I just want the, the colour as a contrast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tiny little bit of my PVA glue. I'm going to check where that would end, about there. And I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of glue to the bottom half of my half inch circle and I'm going to glue that in place and then if you want the top to fold into that when that is properly dry you'll have a little lip left and you just fold the top into there and you have a little secret closure for your envelope that's very sweet isn't it you could also use some craft card and this is what we used earlier in one of our earlier videos to make the whole reinforcers. I'm going to do the same here. I've checked where the little point needs to tuck under. I'm going to add some glue to the bottom half. I'll stick that in place. Then we have another closure. While that's drying, just take the uh, the pointy bit out because it would be dreadful if uh, you accidentally glued the pointy bit in so you couldn't open your envelope. While we have the hole punch, let me show you something else that you could do. I'm going to grab a piece of paper, printed paper, and I'm going to fold it in half. And it needs to be narrow enough that it will go, <coughs> excuse me, that it will fit inside my little hole punch. That's too tall. All will become clear. 
perfect. So I can move this inside my little hole punch. Now, if I move it just to the top, but not, not completely to the top, and I leave a little gap there so that there won't be a cut made there, and if I do a little cut, then I've given myself a tab. And if I get one of my glassine envelopes, you can see that what I could do, I could do it that way as well, I can add little little tags to pages. So in our journal, for example, the way that we might use this would be as a little tab on a page like that. Now you can put it all the way in if you want it for decoration or if you want it to act as a tag you can have it sticking halfway out like that and it's another really good way to use a little hole punch. This is all about getting the maximum out of your equipment and this I haven't had this for very long I've only had this for two or three months but I find this really really useful and I, I wish I'd had one a lot sooner. Another way that you can zhuzh up these little closures if you don't like them to be too plain is with a button. Find a little button that will fit on top of your closure and then just glue it into position. There we go. And then when you're closing your envelope you're, you're not closing it behind the button the button is protected a little bit by the round, half inch round piece of craft card that we cut and stuck on there in the first place. So that's another way to do your closures. Here are another couple of ideas for ways that you can use glassine bags and paper clips. If you did happen to have a little stamp maybe with a flower or a butterfly in it and you did have some brown ink I happen to be using an archival ink called potting soil but any any brown ink would do. Then you could use the edge of the pad to go around the outside of one of your torn pieces of book papers and then you could repeat stamp if you only have one little stamp you could repeat stamp four or five times up the side of that stamp just off the edge just makes it a little bit more interesting and I've cut a flower from one of our I don't have much of this left now one of our uh, wildflower book pages and I've just stitched that onto the printed page it's not print it's not stitched all the way through and I've stuck that onto the glassine bag and then I've taken some of my words and I've put some of my uh, brown ink around the edges of those cut out words and I've just glued them onto the front of my bag the other thing that you could do is you could make a tiny tiny little envelope this is so small oh there's the dog shouting at us this is absolutely tiny and I've fixed in place one of the large uh, paper clips and that means that if I had a page I could slip this onto the page like that and you would have a tiny little envelope on the side of one of your journaling pages. The other thing that you can do with a paper clip is you can dress it up a little bit with um, some of your papers. So I've taken one of my printed sheet papers, I've gone around the outside edge with the brown ink, you could also do this with a brown pen, and I've cut a sort of a fishtail into the bottom of this and I've repeated that with one of the pages from our flower book. I've taken a piece of string and I've just tied a, um, a really rubbish bow, <laughs> but I've tried, I tied a bow in the centre and I've taken one of my words, I've gone around it with brown ink and I've stuck that onto my my little whatever that is, my little design on the bottom of my paper clip and that means that I can add that to one of my journal pages as well. These look quite nice when they're at the, the top of a page and then if you wanted you could tuck extra things in underneath that paper clip as well and there are so many variations on what you can do. So you just take a piece of paper and just turn it over the, uh, the, the, the bottom of the paper clip and glue it in place and then you can add anything you want on those and they can be really long, they can be really short, they can be quite diddy. It's entirely up to you what you think uh, is best for your project. 
and uh, then you can use a glassine bag just to pop in a couple of sheets of paper. These are a couple of sheets that I've cut from our uh, our tea stained papers. One of them I've just cut with straight edges, the other one I've distressed so you can see the sort of difference. When I say distressed I mean I've sort of curled in the edges and I've, I've roughed them up a little bit. And then I've taken a tiny little piece of uh, paper from my book with the wildflowers in it and I've just folded it over the top and glued it in place and that gives me a couple of tags on the top of my pieces of paper and then they fit nicely into my little bag which I've just made by gluing a seam at the back there and then gluing across the bottom there. That's another little bag and I can hold those things in place if I want with my embellished paper clip. So there are a few more ideas. If you have some more supplies such as um, a stamp and some brown ink, of course if you didn't have those things you can still do these, just use a, a brown pen to go around the edges and forget the stamping. And um, that's all I have to show you today. So I hope that those little things are useful ideas for you and that maybe you learned a little bit with the envelope origami and uh, with the paper clip as well that turns into a cross, a kiss on the back and a heart on the front. I think that's quite sweet. So I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching as always and um, I hope you'll join me again soon for our next video. Take care.